So I guess I can give some update stuff on a little bit of everything here. Um, so Steve went ahead and ordered an actual Easy Wire 21 circuit harness from Easy Wire. Uh, it hasn't come in yet. So uh, he just he didn't want to mess with this, you know, this cheaper version of the Easy Wire from eBay. It uh, and the guy listing it as easy wiring on the head on the title easy wiring 12 circuit and then it comes in and it's not that and then steve hits him up about a message with a message uh and and the guy's like oh i'm sorry you thought that was easy wire this is actually made by such and such <laughs> i can't believe somebody would you know do that on the title but whatever um so Wiring harness is coming, not sure when. Um, I can't decide if I want to go ahead and rip the wiring out of this car and go ahead and start rewiring it and just worry about Jim coming and doing the rockers later. I don't really know. But uh, anyway, I may end up using that, that cheap 12 circuit uh, in the two door post project. <clears throat> so, you know, everybody's different well, what wiring they use. Uh, but I can tell you in the past 20 years, I've installed probably about 15 easy wire harnesses around about there. So I am comfortable with easy wire. It's a good quality harness, even though it's inexpensive. But, uh, you know, there's other brands out there. There's Painless, American Auto Wire. I, I mean, there's a, quite a few wiring companies out there. And the prices are mild to wild. And if you're going to hide your wiring, you really need a universal kit because if you're going to route wiring differently than stock and you're running different components than stock like your headlight switch, ignition switch, all that kind of stuff, it's best to get a universal harness because that allows you, you have more than enough length of wire and you can cut it to fit and put your own ends on it. So you don't need an $800 harness, I promise you. So. I use easy wire, you guys can use whatever you want, I'm just telling you. So I did do some work this past weekend to the two-door post, but it was almost kind of in vain. I spent about three hours on trying to fabricate, hand fabricate a panel in the back, back here. And I had to make it out of several different pieces because that piece is actually curved, crowned, and it has two steps in it. And they fade out into a crown. So very difficult to try to hand make here without you know proper metalworking stuff i just have a few basic things here so i ended up finding those panels at jigs for 50 bucks a piece i think they were so i went ahead and bought them and uh, that way i can just put them in there and be done with it it's this whole rear inner panel uh, back here and i thought that was a pretty decent buy for 50 bucks so i didn't have to spend that much time but i spent four hours three four hours the first day saturday and then i fiddled with it for another two or three hours sunday morning and then that's when i decided i just kind of gave up because I, I made two attempts at building that and then i cut it apart and used part of it and tried adding on and i just got sick of it so big mess big mess uh I went ahead and hugged the quarterback on so it can hang there all week. I don't like that just off the car and laying around. You know what I mean? I like to get it up there and hang it. But uh, anyway, see what this weekend brings when I can get back on this and work on it again. I don't know if I mentioned it or not. I'm going to go ahead and buy two new rockers for this. So just get those and put those in and be done with it. Let's see. I think that's about it. As far as I went, um, hard top. There's nothing, nothing to report on that. I've just been driving it. Uh, I drive it pretty regularly, actually, which is kind of cool. But uh, I haven't actually washed it and polished it. And well, my idea of washing it is a wet microfiber, and then you know, go back over it with the polisher. But I've just kind of done the California duster thing and it's it, it's not as shiny as it should be because I haven't got any wax on it in a while but uh, let's see so several months ago yeah two months ago three months ago I don't remember when it was 
I spent a weekend, it was actually the one weekend and then the following weekend. One of the weekends was the, the weekend, might have been two weekends before Randy actually brought those 255s. So I knew I wanted to get that purple Monte Carlo Supersport out of my fenced area so I could get the four door and the two door that Randy was bringing in there. <clears throat> so I drug it out and I took it to my backyard. And I have a white Monte Carlo SS back there that had a really nice chassis under it because the purple car had a bent frame. So I actually switched those frames out and the, there, I had an appointment with a scrap guy that was gonna come and take the white Monte Carlo and all that kind of stuff and I never got took the time out to go back out there and finish taking the parts off of it. So scrap guy's pretty much on hold waiting on me, which I'm not in a hurry. But anyway, the purple car is now sitting on a new chassis. It's not bolted down, it's just sitting on it. <clears throat> and I went ahead and stuck uh, the fenders and uh, the nose cone and the hood on it. Uh, nothing has all the hardware and it's just a couple of bolts in each fender and it's not even tight. Like the fender bolts are just kind of run halfway. Nose cones just held on by two nuts, one on each side, and it's just hanging there. But uh, I guess I can show you guys that. So here's the Monte Carlo. It's just sitting back here. Again, the fenders are not bolted on. They're just barely on there. But it, it's kind of amazing because now it looks like almost a complete car. It looks way better than it did, you know what I mean? I have the inside chock full of parts. So this is it with the hood up. That is a turbo v6 buick uh, carbureted application non-intercooled with a 400 turbo sitting behind it sitting down in the car so that was kind of nice getting the transmission and the engine out of my garage but uh it has been sitting back here for uh, i don't know a month month and a half two months i actually pulled the car around there with my truck and i set the engine and trans down in i had to change the mounts on the on the frame which was pretty easy but anyway, I set the engine and trans in, and that's it. They're not even bolted in. They're just sitting in there. But it got it out of the garage. And uh, when you can see how much room on a G-Body, when you put a V6 Buick in there, a 231 cubic inch engine, you can see how much room is in there. That's why the Grand Nationals had so much room for a big old thick intercooler and stuff in the front of them. But uh, it'll be a neat car. It's just uh, it's not high on the priority list right now, but I do have a bunch of nice parts for it. Uh, it will be a nice car all right guys so I've got Steve's intake off and I'm gonna show you that I've still got to take the rocker arms loose and get the push rods out then I got to pull all the lifters out and of course I'm gonna inspect the bottoms of them because I always do but man this this just sucks these lifters I don't know whether to save some of them that was quiet or junk them you know what i mean <laughs> probably should just trash them because i don't want this problem again but anyway this is his engine with the intake off of it and the valve covers and you can see this uh, aluminum roller tip rockers that look real nice and uh, funny thing those cast aluminum chevrolet scripted valve covers fit without hitting these i thought that was awesome so they do fit so Anyway, these have these are poly locks, so they have a little Allen set screw down in them. So I've got to loosen off the Allen set screw and then take the nuts. And I, I don't want to take them all the way off. I just want to loosen them up enough to turn them to get the push rods out. But anyway, that's that's kind of where it's at. And uh, I do want to run you guys through the uh, intake gaskets I use because uh, I talked about this in an older video, but some people may not have seen it. And it's just what I use. You guys can use whatever you want. So when you buy a Felpro engine gasket full set from Felpro for an old school small block like perimeter bolt, uh, this is the gaskets that you get. Well, this right here is for your heat crossover that goes under your carburetor. And what it does is basically heat up uh, the bottom of the intake for like cold weather starting and all that kind of crap. And, you know, no hot rodder wants that on their car. And plus, with today's ethanol and the fuel and the unleaded, it, it lowers the boiling point of the fuel, so you want as less heat as you can get to the bottom of that intake, and especially to the carburetor. So what I always use is a Felpro 1204. So I had Steve pick up a new set because I never, ever reuse intake gaskets. Um, these are the ones off his car. Uh, it tore a little bit anyway, which it usually does, but... 
Anyway, they have a little stainless steel cap on both sides that's spot welded together, and that's a crush seal, and it seals off from that hot exhaust crossing over underneath that intake manifold. Some intakes don't have it, but I still like to use that. Um, anyway, instead of having that hot exhaust just going straight to the aluminum intake, that kind of blocks it a little bit. But anyway, that's, that's just what I use. And this, I can only assume, you know, these are the ones that come out of the box. I'm assuming that these are, you know, for even the center bolt stuff, uh, pre-Vortec, because even these 1204s, you can see how big the hole is right here and then how small those are. So that's a pretty good difference in size, and that's probably for your, you know, different angled center ones that would come in like your 87, you know, 88-ish. I don't know what year they started at, 86 or 87, but they went to center bolt uh, heads. But anyway, I'm assuming that's the same gasket because it has a bigger hole there for that different angled two center bolts on each side. But anyway, uh, getting right along there on his car, so we'll get that going. Um, I do want to show this. This is kind of neat. So I bought this. It's probably been about two years ago because I used it on my car. I don't have a set, a full set of AN wrenches for AN fittings. You know, AN fittings are aluminum, and uh, generally. But uh, anyway, they have a color on them, and if you use a regular wrench, it'll chew up the color on it, the the coating. So you're supposed to use these AN wrenches, and it doesn't tear up the color or gall the aluminum up on your fittings. But this is the only AN wrench I have. It's a 4 on one end and a 6 on the other. So I ended up, instead of buying a full set of wrenches, which was pretty expensive, I bought the Crescent wrench style. <laughs> and I got to tell you, it, it actually is pretty nice, and it's not as sloppy as I figured it would be. But this thing works pretty good, and it was like 12 bucks on uh, eBay. I think is where I got that, like two years ago. Anyway, I just thought I'd show that. It's, uh, you know, for guys like me that's on a budget, you know, you don't you don't want to spend a hundred and something bucks on an A and wrench set or 200, whatever it is. You can get one of those and rock and roll. You do have to have two wrenches, though. But you get two of them, if anything, you know what I mean? For 12 bucks a piece. But that's where I'm at. I'm going to uh, pull the rocker arms loose, get the push rods out, inspect the lifters, and then I'll be able to put the, the new lifters in. They are soaking. So, I guess, I guess that's about it. That's where I'm at to this point, anyway. Well, I couldn't just turn the rocker arm sideways to uh, get the push rods out. They were too big bodied and they were hitting the springs. So, I ended up having to take them off completely. But, um... It's uh, pretty much got all that stuff out of there. This one's sitting up right here, front and center. Now you can tell it was spinning. It's got a little circle thing going on in the middle of it there. Tell that was spinning too. So I, I talked about this in a video and there was a couple of people that disagreed with me. So I'm going to explain this a little bit better in detail so you understand. <clears throat> in that video I talked about lifters, how they're not flat. I don't care if they're called flat tappet. These are not flat. These are crowned. When these have the crown, basically when these are ground or cut, the, the, it is done on an angle with the lifter spinning. So it has a, you know, the, the grinding disc, whatever you want to call it, is angled on that lifter like that while it spins. These are not cut and ground flat. If that was the case, you'd have a flat cam. So, or a dish lifter, actually both. But these are ground on an angle and that's what I talked about in that video and I had a couple people that uh, was telling me that that's not true these are flat and that is not true these have a crown on them basically they're domed to put it in easy terms for you to understand so now you know yeah you can lay something flat on here and you'll see that if you do put a straight edge on here and that is not crowned do not use that lifter So, 
I'm trying to decide whether to like I think this one was the one we kept having problems with which was this little guy right here number two right here it's the second one back at the front so that one I'm just gonna completely throw in the trash I don't know I might take it apart hell let's take it apart let's see what we got nothing to lose all right so I got the snap ring out it took four to five attempts to get it out of there but it came out and this piece pops up see any damage but I, I've had this happen before and I took the lifter apart and I couldn't see anything so pretty much what happens with a if you end up with a lifter hydraulic flat tap at lifter like in a small block and you got one that is still making noise and you're tightening it down it's still making noise you can put a million miles on that engine it ain't gonna fix it it uh, it's a bad lifter it just happens so it's best to replace it and i really don't know what the deal is and i'll tell you something else and this is just from my personal experience from building small block chevys most of my life um, to pump up a lifter all you do is prime the engine period if you're getting oil out of that rocker that lifter is primed i'm telling you so you don't need to sit there with some kind of tool in oil and try to push that down. That ain't going to work. So you put that in the engine and you prime that oil pump with a drill and those rockers start oiling, that lifter's primed and pumped up. I promise you. Well, that ain't coming out of there. So there's problem number one right there. I mean, these fit pretty, pretty snug, but that should come out of there and it's not. So, that is uh, probably the reason right there. I took a whole set apart one time that I had, because they sat for a long time and the, uh, they were kind of surface rusted here and there, and I took every single one of them apart and cleaned each individual component and put all 16 back together and put them in my truck. So... Just from doing 16 of them at one time, I never had one that was stuck like that. I mean, this is a tight fit, don't get me wrong, but that, that should come out of there. That should walk its way out of there, and it ain't doing it. And, of course, I'm one-handed, too, so... Yeah, that should have... That should have come out of there, guys. So that, I'm actually wondering about this lifter because I have never seen two ribs on a lifter and I've never seen a ridge cut in it like that on a comp lifter. I've got an engine sitting over there with comp lifters in it, comp cam and lifters. So I need to go pull one of them out and see if that's, unless comp changed or something. These might just be some, you know, overseas replacement lifters or something. Maybe they were in a comp box or something. I don't know. Jim said they were a comp. See, I can move that. It'll move up and down. Like that's moving up and down, but it won't come out. That should fall out of there. That's weird. Wow. This is an engine I have here that is, uh, it's got a comp can lifter kit in it. Of course, none of them sticking up there enough for me to get a hold of. Ah, you sucker. <laughs> I didn't bring my pick over here. There we go. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now that is a 10 year old comp cam and lifter kit. So they, maybe they just changed, I don't know. But I know this is comp because it came in a comp box and the cam too, but that is the one out of Steve's car. And if it is a comp, it is definitely a different supplier because it has two ribs in it and a notch cut in it right here. So 
that's an interesting notation. And I could have changed it. I mean, it's been 10 years. Who knows? But That one was spinning too. Yeah, if you ever notice on the bottom when you pull brand new lifters out, you'll see they have a swirly look to them, and that's because they're ground in an angle. So, anyway, these are not supposed to be flat, period. They have a crown, a dome on them, basically. And they do always chamfer this edge a little bit, and it doesn't matter uh, if it was chamfered or not anyway, because the cam never gets out there on that edge. All right, so I went in there on the internet, done a little research, and found out that these are most likely comp lifters. Uh, these are comps mainline hydraulic lifter. They have just a comp hydraulic flat tappet lifter for a small block Chevy. Has the two raised ribs and a groove cut right here. It looks just like them. And then they have comp high energy, which doesn't have these deals on it. So that's what I have in that other engine probably is the high energy ones. So, that is uh, pretty interesting. Just a bad lifter, you know, that's all it is. But we're going to go ahead and replace them with uh, sealed power ones. So, that will pretty much, hopefully, take care of the issue. <clears throat> but, I need to get the rest of these out of here. I don't know whether to throw them away or... Uh, I don't know which one on this side was bad, but I do know this number two one was bad, and that's the one I took apart because it's definitely going in the trash. I'm not messing with that thing. Um, but these others were okay, so I think I might save those for in case I scab together an old small block for something. So it ain't going to hurt to try them. So save them for later, we'll say. Thanks for watching.